you. So it's a great pleasure to welcome onto the stage a really excellent guy. We had so much great feedback about the talk that he did on um, Thursday. Um, what day was it? Sunday? I'm losing the days now. I think it's Tuesday today. We got some really, really great feedback that everybody loved his energy, loved what he was presenting. And now it's your chance to actually have a go and really start getting into the solution process. So please put your hands together for John Robson. There you go. Is this working? This is going to work today. Do we need to go up a little bit, or is it okay? Up a little bit? Yeah. Cool. Chris is just sorting it out. Hasn't he been great? Yeah. 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 Ooh, woo, woo. There you go. Is that, is that better? Yeah. Yay. <laughs> cool. Ah, fun, 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 fun. So, beautiful. I, uh, yeah, I can feel the shift already is happening. Uh, beautiful session there by Robin Joanne to bring that together nicely, right? I like that uh, process. Mm. Okay, so to today we're going to be going through um, just a, a le little brief. Oh, I just got some stuff on that. <laughs> um, a little brief uh, section on uh, just the basic therapy planning. It's, it's, I'm literally going to run through it just quickly, just because I was asked to kind of introduce what's already available with regards to therapy planning. Um, and then I really want to get into the solution process for today, um, because it's my intention uh, to have everybody in the room to have an experience of the solution process. So that's a big task. <laughs> you're, the, you're the largest group that I've tried to take this through in one go, but the good thing is I know you're all brilliant <laughs> and you all know the work, so it's just going to be like knocking down dominoes. Yes? <laughs> good. Okay. So let's, um, let's go into it. So first uh, thing first, the meta, uh, just a quick overview of the meta health therapy plan is you know you just begin with that meta uh, health analysis process to find the underlying stress triggers um, is everyone in the room now available at uh, uh, understanding of the the meta health analysis process yeah good nobody that's not good okay so you find all of those that information you then develop uh, a therapy plan based on the biopsychosocial um, and integrative um, therapies uh, modality, so you're thinking about what things can go into the to help the mind, what helps the body, what helps the spirit and social components. And then you begin to just b uh, begin the process of transformation using any available tools that you have available to you, whatever those can be. You know, this is w what's beautiful about the meta health community, right? In that whatever we have, we can utilize within the meta health system, right? Should we have a round of applause for the beautiful system that it is, so we can all come in together? Because <laughs> then we get such a wide variety of amazing people, right? You get such a, uh, such a good mixture, so we can all be our own different kind of crazy together, <laughs> which is nice. So you then begin the process of transformation. There's a basic form, uh, Walter, you asked just to sort of see it, and I can make sure this is available to you as well. Everyone uh, just seen this form, which I think is what you were looking for, uh, as a mental health therapy planning process. I don't know if you can see it too well. Um, I can't even, and I'm right next to it. <laughs> so it just says like, you know, uh, what are you going to do to help the mind to heal? Uh, so Walter just want to notice, letting go of trapped emotions, releasing the stress triggers, transforming the condition reflexes and everything like that. With the body, symptom treatment, increase the vitality with the social, real life trauma resolution and create a supportive lifestyle for healing. So that's that done, which is good. <laughs> so that's the therapy planning part of the uh, uh, talk done. <laughs> We'll go into it a little bit more in terms, you know, we don't need to do that. We've all done this, right? Um, <laughs> oh, I'm going to start giggling again. I cannot start giggling again. That was quite funny the other day. I was getting a lot of reports, like, what was that? 
So I just want to just recap some of those principles uh, that we went through the other day, just, just in a short and quickly, quicker version today, um, just because some people weren't actually here then. So I thought it'd be a nice idea to go through. There you go. This is for you. <laughs> the one and the many. Yeah, through the one we get the many. Okay, so remembering that um, we all have a soul, and we use that as a wonderful acronym for spirit of unconditional love, spirit of unconditional love, because it seems like when we step into that um, unconditional love space, not charge, not judgment, but recognizing uh, the truth that exists, we have this experience of unconditional love for what is, and that is what creates our solution, a transformation in our psyche up to a further and a higher degree of who we are. Um, and we, yeah, we'll get into that. And then we have the life spark, yeah? The journey from where we are today to where we are intending to be and moving towards. So we call this the life, life spark. Okay? Along our journey from where we are to where we want to be, Good. There are many stages of evolution and growth and development. Many things for us to integrate our learning on to grow more fully into the soul. This, when we come down to the level of the mind, and this model again, um, as, as I mentioned the other day, no model is true or fal false. They are just more or less useful. And I find this model to just be a really useful model in order to understand some complex concepts with a simple diagram. So I use it a lot. And it was kind of funny. Did everyone remember from Dr. Bader's talk where he had that image of all of the layers of the soul? Celestial bodies, astral bodies, and everything. And you saw that squiggly line? I saw that and I was like, he stole my show. No, <laughs> I stole his. I have access to his computer. I just, what's Dr. Bada doing? It's going to be great. I'll just copy that <laughs> and make it in English. So, yeah, it's good. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I need to access a few more people's computers now and I can just steal them all. <laughs> so when we get down to the level of the mind, this is where it makes those judgments. It, um, this is where the dualism and that polarity that Helena and, uh, and Penny talked about, the polarity and the, the, the charge and the duality that Quasi talked about and that we know and understand. And this is where it begins to label things as uh, positive, negative, good, bad, right, wrong, nice, mean, uh, challenging, supportive, and all of these concepts. And the more we exaggerate those polarities uh, through our experiences, because every time we go through an experience in our life, we make a judgment on that event. And then if, once we've made an initial judgment, whether it was good or bad, that thing, once we experience it again, can add potentially more weight to it every time we go through it, right? If we've labeled a certain thing bad, then we go through it again, ah, oh, it's bad, and now it's got a bit more weight to it. Ah, oh, it's bad, and now it's got a bit more weight to it. And in the end, we're just getting weighed down with so much baggage as, um, who was he was talking about the rucksack and getting over the, the rock? LJ? Yes. Lars. Lars? Yes. Yeah, the rock. And, it, and he brought up a, another quote for me that I really like, which is, um, yeah, stepping stones or stumbling blocks. These, these rocks that come up in our life that we can either use them as stepping stones or they can become stumbling block blocks on our path to, to growth. Um, and the best way to do it is to let go of our baggage, really. So we start to add more and more and more. And the solution process itself is through a process of...